Smack with you before them. Yeah! Joey, you got a lot of things in your mind, and you got a particularly beautiful mind. So I want to give you the opportunity to speak your beautiful mind, which is the name of your show. I shouldn't be saying this so much, but like I'm saying, uh, I threw out four topics for you. Uh, we got masculinity. What's the deal with makeup? That's my Jerry Seinfeld impression. We have small people, big cars. That's topic number three. Or the end of the world. And whatever inspires you to talk about any of these things, go for it. But I'm giving you 10 minutes, right? And I, All right. I, Sounds and good. The goal is you don't stop talking, okay? Okay. Um, <laughs> hold on, hold well, on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, don't, don't start yet. I'm wondering if I should have like an on-screen timer. I'll put an on-screen timer when I, when I edit this. All right? Sound good? All right. Okay, so you ready? Joey, speak your beautiful mm -hmm. mind. So Ty thought of a few random topics, and uh, one of them was masculinity. Um, and I have a few thoughts on this. Um, I didn't meet my biological father until I was 24 years old. I didn't have a uh, father figure until uh, about age 13. And so there's a lot of kind of things I had to learn on my own about being a man. And, um, and I, well, I learned and from my opinion that there's about as many ways to be a man as there are men. And, um, when uh, the whole uh, the, the trans movement became more and more public um, a few years ago, I was I was completely in support of it, 100%. There's just one there's one thing about it that that has a tendency to bother me just just a tad bit, and that is when someone's asked, um, you know, how why why do they want to have a biological sex change? And their response is, I, well, I don't feel like a man or I don't feel like a woman or, you know. And um, in my 27 years of living as a cisgender man and identifying as a man and not having a problem with it, I couldn't tell you what, what a man is supposed to feel like. Um, I knew from the beginning that gender roles are a social construct and that, you know, we, we may have brains wired a little, little differently here and there. And, um, but ultimately around, around age 17, maybe 19, I realized that I, I don't have to like things that other men like. I don't have to be interested in cars, which I'm, I'm really, really not. I mean, I'd like to learn how to work on them just for, you know, out of pure interest, but it's never been like an obsession, never been that much into, into sports. I was, I was, I tried out for contact sports and, um, about eighth and ninth grade year. Um, but it didn't work out for me. I ended up becoming the water boy. I was a theater kid and, but I've never with all of that, you know, with all of those reasons, excuse me, um, I've never had it had a reason in my mind to question my my gender in all of that. So most of the time, I want to I want it's it's not really any of my business unless it, unless a trans friend of mine makes it my business. Um, most of the time, I I think that it's a it's a legitimate situation where there's a neurological disorder that's backed completely by biology and anatomy and science. And, you know, they just need to continue to uh, see, see doctors and, you know, ask, ask what the doctors would have them do. And it's just not really, I, I don't really, I don't hold an opinion on that part at all. And I haven't from the beginning, like it's just, it's your body ultimately. Um, so, but when it comes to masculinity and femininity, it's not, I don't, I don't think it's an exact science and I don't know the first thing about sociology or psychology, but from, uh, from my current perspective, and I plan on learning about those things from my current perspective, just based on living, it just seems like what, what, what is, what are those things? What, what is masculinity? What is femininity? How do you define it? How do you measure it? How do you, you know, like, and who determines what, what, what that is? Who determines what's more masculine, what's more feminine, feminine. And if you have more masculine traits than feminine traits, does that mean you're a man trapped in a woman's body or vice versa? And it's just, 
And then I think it, things have just gone a, a little haywire. And um, I, I'm bisexual, so I identify with the LGBT plus community. And so I think things have kind of gone off the deep end where all this is concerned. Because now we have, what is it, like 51 genders. And so it's, 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 a, little, it's a little confusing to me. Because, you see, if, if I were a trans person and I were convinced and certain based on all kinds of evidence, both in, you know, um, both anecdotal and um, biological, medical, all of this evidence that I am, a, let's say, a woman in a man's body, like I have a woman's brain and I know it and I'm trying to transfer from woman to man and then all these people come in saying well oh we can all just be whatever we want we can identify with whatever we want and we can just it just doesn't matter anymore and it's just i don't know um i don't, I don't know about all that because it, it just it just doesn't doesn't seem necessary and at the same time it also just it's not it doesn't seem like science to me it seems very much like astrology and the things in and the and the the mars briggs personality test and the things kind of in in that boat of the non-exact sciences or almost the, the i dare say pseudoscience it just uh, it just doesn't seem it doesn't i think it's also self-defeating and counterproductive when it comes to um helping the trans community, helping the world take the trans community seriously. Um, when you just basically, oh, we can just make shit up. We can just be whatever we want to believe and do whatever we want to do. And it's just, um, and I think it, it it's a lot of giving into what's called postmodernism, which is a lot of, uh, which is a lot of what religious people give it, get into too. It's basically, the belief that science is just an opinion or science can't explain everything. And it's just, uh, and, um, you know, facts, facts are malleable in a sense, and it, it can go down that road. I'm not making, I'm not, a, I'm not asserting an absolute truth. I'm not asserting with anything with a hundred percent confidence or anything like that. It just seems to be that with all that, it can lead down a road to where, where facts don't really matter. And I think, the facts are on a trans person's side. And so if we kind of just start throwing, throwing all this out there that we can, we can just do whatever and identify as whatever, it's just, uh, I don't know about that. So, but I mean, I don't, I don't have enough knowledge and expertise to write a book on it or to do a peer reviewed journal on it. Um, but it's just, uh, it, it, uh, uh, I, I, that's just my current thoughts on the matter. I just, I just feel that, that you really can't define masculinity and you really can't define femininity. And I think it can cause somebody who is just perfectly natural and perfectly normal, you know, like a man who's interested in theater or a man who's interested in makeup to become self-conscious about who he is, that, well, if I'm a man, I guess if I'm not interested in all these things that most men are, something must be wrong with me. And I think that can, you know, these kind of things can cause that kind of, that kind of mindset to go down that road too. So it's, um, and <laughs> for some reason, what the next question that uh, Tyrone asked was, what's the deal with makeup? I don't know what's the deal with makeup. I had a lot of fun with it when I was in theater and I actually plan on doing drag someday just for fun. Cause there's actually a lot of cisgender males that are that do drag. And so I, I, I'm completely okay with it. And I think thought theater was a lot of fun and I miss it. And I plan to be a part of it again someday when the world starts to turn again. Um, so, so yeah. Um, da. Minute 30, keep talking, keep talking. Minute 30, I got a minute 30 seconds. Okay, considering that, now that I mentioned it, the, um, another topic <laughs> of what, he, what Tyrone said was the end of the world. Um, 
it kind of does feel like the end of the world. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we, we got a lot of shit going on right now. Um, so we've got, uh, we got <laughs> a lot of shit. And, um, but the way that I keep saying is that, that I just, I just try to tell myself that there's people out there that are experts that have done this for years. I've been dealing with all this kinds of stuff for decades and they know who to contact and they know who to talk to and they know what to do. So I'm just going to chill out and have a PS4 and go to work and uh, talk to my friends and shit, you know? So I hope it's not the end of the world, but if it is, uh, I'm a very adaptable animal. I mean, our species wouldn't have made it this far. We weren't adaptable, so I plan to just tap into that, no matter what happens. So, you have thirty seconds left. Keep talking. I have thirty seconds. Keep okay. talking. Um, what's up with small people and big cars? I mean, is that not that's, that doesn't seem very safe? Oh, All right, time, 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 time. Time. That was really good. That okay. was really good. All right. So I don't know if there was if if I should do like a summary, but you had some really good quotes in there. Um, the ones that I wrote out were when you were talking about masculinity. You said there's as many ways to be a man as there are men, and I thought that's such a kernel of truth and such a well. That's a that's like a book cover right there. That's really good, and then. What is masculinity? How do you define it? How do you find it? How do you measure it? And I was like, that's, that's something that I've always had in the back of my mind, but I never had anyone say that wasn't inside my head. So like hearing that, I was like, yeah, how do you measure masculinity? And if we don't have a means of measuring that, how do we know what is masculine versus what's masculine? And what does it say that we don't really have a standard? Or what's healthy masculinity versus toxic masculinity? Yeah, like I, I would love to have like better standards for measuring that stuff. Um, I also like the idea of, you know, like the state of the world where we tend to be motivated by not hurting people's feelings as much as we do um, avoiding like the hard truths or like acknowledging that being cruel is a form of kindness in its own right sometimes. Or like kindness is cruel sometimes, but uh, it can lead mm -hmm. down a road where facts don't really matter. And I was like, "Wow, that's that is a well well put sentence." If you could edit it to make it to to, to, to portray and emphasize that I'm not transphobic, that I'm 100. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that. of the trans journey. I'm just kind of speaking on the particular topic of sure. the whole 51 genders thing. Where did that yeah. come from, and how is that helpful? Kind so. Of thing. Yeah, like if I were to speed through the summary, I think I agree with you 100%. Um, I feel like I don't know what it's like to be a man, despite the fact that I am a man. And because I don't know what it's like to be a woman, I have no frame of reference. And having a frame of reference is so important. So that, such that when I meet someone that says, I don't feel like a, a woman, I feel like a man, or I don't feel like a man, I feel like a woman. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, how do you know which one's which? Because even if you were one, yeah, I, I, don't, want I don't even know what a man feels like, and I've been I've been one hundred percent behind identifying right. as a cisgender male. Sure, from as long as I could identify, I didn't even know there was another choice. So it might but be even if there was, I'm fine with it. But I'll throw out this story because I feel like it's worthwhile to ask, give you another ten minutes and ask what would, it would take for you to change your mind, or what would be how would you recognize if you're wrong? Because it's good for you to have a frame of reference too. But the story that I got was one of a guy who. Loved playing guitar, or hated playing guitar actually, but always wanted to play guitar, but just didn't like the practice of playing a guitar. It's just like, I, just, I love the way how it looks. I love the guitars. I think it's a beautiful instrument, but whenever I'm playing it, it just sucks. And I've gone to the guitar stores and I'm playing and just like, this doesn't just make sense to me, but I like playing guitar. And so what happened is he went over to his friend's house who had a lefty guitar and, he, and he's like, well, I'm always playing right-handed, but let me just try it left-handed. And when he had the left-handed guitar in his hand, he was like, oh my gosh, I'm left-handed. And he didn't even realize it his entire life. He's just like, this just feels right. When I did this, it just felt wrong. But when I did this, it feels right. And he played it and he was still bad. Like it wasn't like he was an amazing guitar player, but it was just the idea of when he tried the other way, like when he knew the, the status quo of what he was started off with was not good for him. And when he mm -hmm. tried something else or at least opened up that door, it just made a lot more sense to him. And I can understand someone who's like, steeped in the masculinity lifestyle 
opening up the door to like something a little less masculine or more feminine maybe or something on the other side of the, the fence and being like this feels better than where i was at right now i may not even be a better looking woman or a more attractive male but it, i feel i don't recognize i don't identify with whatever's on this side i feel much better over here and i will take some work obviously but i'm willing to make that transition that's why i identify as trans i was like that makes sense like that I'm, i i never even have an issue with it either way i'm of the state of mind where if someone says uh they were born gay or if they suddenly lived like you know a straight life their entire life and was like you know i'm just gonna just be in love with this dude because <laughs> i just get along with him way more than all these other women i was like i get that it's like i'm totally fine i'm not the gay police i'm not gonna say hey what counts and what doesn't i'm like it's all good to me and then I also, I, if I had my po- if I had my opinion, I would get rid of the terms lesbian, gay, trans, maybe keep them if you really need to be specific, but lesbian, gay, trans, LGBTQ, PA, plus, Q, all that stuff, get rid of it. Call pride, it, Q, just call it pride. Fish. Call it pride, capital, all letters. That's a marketing move straight from black people. We, we, we uh, that's a gimme, that's a freebie right there call it pride it's like pride folk or like pride I, 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 and i'm I like idea. that's good because you already got pride parade there are people who are trying to make that move and i'm like yeah because that's way easier to understand it's mm-hmm. just like hey we're different but we're all different and we can be proud about what makes us different so we can show pride in that i'm like that's cool i, I can i include everybody 100 behind that